Well, as our own Dan Kennedy wrote in a commentary for GBH News this week, breaking up is hard to do. And the media seems to be having a hard time kicking its obsession with all things Donald Trump, to the point where the press is still documenting his every move and quoting crazy schemes and theories that abound within his inner circle. At a CNN town hall this week, President Joe Biden said it best. For four years, all that's been in the news is Trump. The next four years, I want to make sure all the news is the American people. And to be fair, much of it has, with a resurgence of coverage of COVID, vaccines, stimulus relief, and more. But quoting Trump is just too hard to resist. Here is CNN's Manu Raju reading what Trump had to say about Mitch McConnell this week. He says Mitch is a dour, sullen, and unsmiling political hack. And if Republican senators are going to stay with them, they will not win again. Adding to that ad hominem, Politico and Mediate report that the first draft of Trump's statement referred to McConnell's many chins and insulted his wife, former Transportation Secretary Elaine Chao. Resurfacing for the first time in a while, Trump appeared on all the usual media outlets this week speaking about Rush Limbaugh. But the mainstream press picked up on more. You heard President Trump today say that Rush Limbaugh thought that I won this election. It seemed to me almost a, a fitting tribute to say mm. that uh, even in his passing, um, I commend him for believing this falsehood. As our Beat the Press panel mused back in January, Trump coverage needs to be muted. There are things to cover, but they really do belong below the fold. I don't think we need blanket coverage. Then again, Mike Nikitas Nailed it. It's all about the eyeballs. It is all about the clicks. It's all about making money. Pretty much. All right, Mike, I'm going to come to you right away on that, because there was a couple other things that the, the, the press picked up on this week, like Steve Bannon, you know, speaking for this Lincoln breakfast and saying things like crazy theories that Trump's going to run for Congress. He's going to uh, take over the Speaker of the House and then he's going to impeach President Biden. This made front page news. I mean, you can't tell me that's all about the money, all about the eyeballs. That's just nutty stuff that's kind of a continuation of sort of the nuttiness that, that we endured for four years. No, I agree. And um, I agree with Ly Lila said, or I can't remember who said it, but no, he's got to be on the bottom of the fold. But we have to keep covering him. He's an ex-president who's trying to keep his hand in American politics. The future of American politics in the Republican Party may hinge on what he does. Not covering him, I think, is to give up our job. Uh, no one cares if he's playing golf anymore, unless he's playing with Vladimir Putin. Uh, do we cover him side by side with Joe Biden? No. Do we keep fact checking him? Yes. Do we scrutinize everything he says more than ever before? Yes. I believe more information rather than less is what our country is all about and helps people make decisions. Fortunately, he can't tweet anymore. So that removes a lot of the incentive. I think the problem in part is Fox. They feel like they can't stay relevant unless they keep reporting on him. And I watched uh, or listened to the call in he did earlier this week uh, uh, talking about Rush Limbaugh and they let him spout more yeah. false. Oh, I know. So yeah. that's part of the problem. They all but did. I think we have to keep covering him. One America did it too. But but Lila, this, this whole thing with, you know, quoting Mitch McConnell, why, why do we care what he said about Mitch McConnell? What difference does it make? I, I don't really see the point in covering that. That's like the malicious gossipy snarkiness that that has taken over a lot of different channels here. Um, unless I, I suppose one reason to run it is to try to instigate Mitch McConnell into doing something else or into turning his back on Trump. I'm not sure what the long game is here, really. Um, part of me is waiting for him to fill Rush's slot frankly, on talk radio. I think there's a huge audience who does very much care what he has to say. I think that all the people who enthusiastically voted for him and all the people who held their nose and voted for him probably would would tune in. Um, I do think there is value to covering him as an ex-president. I don't think his every snarky comment deserves coverage. I really think that that when there's something newsworthy, we should cover it. But we elevate a lot to the level of newsworthiness that I think maybe doesn't belong to be there um, because we're hoping to get clicks. We're hoping to get eyeballs. We're hoping to um, maintain a conversation during a presidency that so far Biden's turned out to be pretty staid and status quo and there's not a lot of um a lot of stuff to incite people there so maybe that's how it's trying to be injected I'm not sure yeah i think the best you can hope for is that the media in general 
serious media are aware of uh, uh, practicing restraint when it comes to doling out coverage to him. You already saw that before the election with the cable nets, the non-Fox cable nets, uh, being very uh, sparing about dipping into his rallies and so forth. But keep in mind, as uh, Peter Hamby pointed out in, the, in Vanity Fair recently, it took Sarah Palin three years to fall all the way to the bottom of the barrel with her reality show, Sarah Palin's Alaska. Did all of you enjoy that? I know you watched it, Emily, right? <laughs> I missed it. Uh, but it was terrible. It took her three years to float to the uh, catch basin of celebrity, political celebrity status. So it's going to take a while. And I don't think any self-respecting national political coverage can ignore a McConnell-Trump feud this early on. Hmm. Down the road, reassess by all means, but I think the media is stuck with him and, and so are consumers. Well, the problem is, and I agree with John, that it, it's natural that the media are going to cover something like uh, Trump's attacks on McConnell. The problem is he's making attacks on McConnell. We have one president at a time, and almost all ex-presidents, most of the time, uh, have held their fire and and let the new president uh, establish his agenda and move forward, whether they agree with it or not. And what we have in this situation is the former president, who, by the way, lost by a lot, uh, acting like he's kind of the the co-president or the president in exile. And Trump was so good for ratings, for newspaper circulation. Uh, he was very good for the media in a lot of ways that it's very, very difficult to walk away from that. I don't know how they meet that challenge because other former presidents haven't even presented that challenge. They've had the decency to to pretty much go away. Mm, good point.